Hello and welcome to a new video by MagiCraft. Today I show you a new program that I developed about the last few weeks and months. The name of the program is Structure Animator and as the name already says it, it's there to animate structures. If you open the program to Windows pops up the one on the right side is the structures wiki. The guys who already used my instant structures mod know this wiki already. It's there to animate structures. You click on this chest to start the animation. And on the left side is the control window. You use the control window to set the basic properties of the structure animation. And you have a few export properties. For example, you can export your structure as a screenshot, as a video or as a GIF. But let's start with the animation of a structure. First time you start the animation, it loads a few seconds. It is rotated around the y-axis by default. But let's go back to the control window and put this window to the right side and let's experiment a little bit with the settings with the properties. The first property is the animate structure. Disable it and the animation stops. Now the animation doesn't need more processor power and let's rotate it again. Here's the rotate setting, disable it and the rotation stops, but the structure is still animated. For example, we can um, change this property and the structure moves. The render frame completely property is disabled for the moment and here's the render ground property. It shows a little bit of ground. Let's go to the very interesting settings. With this text field you can manipulate the position of the structure. It is divided in the X, Y and Z axis to manipulate the position of a structure. And three categories is the direction of view, the position and rotation of the structure. Just imagine in the animation frame as a coordinate axis. Then we would move the position of this axis with the direction of view category. Let's test it by move the structure along the y axis. and move the structure on the x-axis and so on. Let's reset it. Let's imagine again the axis of coordinates in the animation window. And if we manipulate the position category, we change the position of the structure relative to the coordinate axis. For example, we move the minus 3 and set 5. The structure rotate um, around the center. But we can also use other numbers. For example, we change the z-axis and the y-axis. Okay, this number was a little bit too high. And it looked like this. Let's reset it to the basic rotation. And we go to the third category, the rotation. And we pause it for the moment. 
I will explain the function of this field later. For example, we can rotate it with 90 degrees or 180 degrees. Or rotate it around the z-axis with 50 degrees. Or for example with 25 degrees. Then it looks like this. And now it looks a little more curious. Let's reset these properties with the auto pause button. Then we come to the fields that are below the first row of fields of each category, the pace and the speed up. If you have the pace 0 0.25 of your y-axis of the rotation, then 0, 0 0.25 is added each rendered frame to the rotation of the y-axis. If we set the value to 1, the rotation is a little bit faster and if we, if we set the rotation to 15, it's much faster. Let's reset the rotation and we can enter any floating point in these fields. Or we rotate the structure around the z-axis and the x-axis. And now you see the structure from each corner. This could be a very interesting feature if you have planets and we reset it again. Let's set the pace of the y-axis of the direction of view. We iterate it with 1 and the structure goes up. If we set a minus in front of the floating point, the structure comes down again. Or we can slow it down. Or we can combine it with the pace of the z-axis. Let's reset it again. Let's come to the speed up. After a frame is rendered, the speed up value is added to the pace value. For example, we enter 0 0.01 and the pace gets higher and higher and the structure rotates faster and faster. Or we can slow down the speed up and if you use a negative speed up, the pace gets negative 2 after a while. We can apply these settings to the other fields too, but I will skip that so the video doesn't get too long. Let's come to the export properties. For example, we can use them to take screenshots, to record a video or to create a GIF. First I will explain a little bit about the screenshots. At the bottom you see the folder where the screenshots are saved. This is the default folder to save screenshots. You don't have the option to name a single screenshot. Instead screenshots get a timestamp by press capture screenshot we take a single screenshot and a window pops up that shows how many screenshots we take and shows us more information about the record if we take one more screenshot the number is added by one let's go to the folder and you see a subfolder with the name of the structure and this folder stores the screenshots. There's the option save screenshots. If you activate it, it saves one screenshot after one frame is rendered. But be careful with this feature because the structure animator can animate several dozens of frames per second and after, for example, five seconds, 
you have 200 images stored on your hard drive. This function is very useful if you want to use screenshots in other program, for example to create a GIF with a more advanced program than the structure animator. One more addition to the screenshots, the screenshots are captured with the resolution of the animation frame from this corner to the button right corner. Now I will explain a little bit about the video settings. You can start recording a video by pressing F3 or click on the record video checkbox and you use the same key and checkbox to stop the record. There's the folder and you can enter a video resolution here. If you check the change window size checkbox and you start recording a video, the animation frame changes its size to the size of the video resolution. Let's assume we have a situation where you can't check the change window size checkbox and the animation window size differs from the video resolution. Then you have the black bars and stretch edge checkbox below. If you activate the black bars checkbox it upscale or downscale each frame proportional so black bars are added to the top and to the bottom. If you use as a stretch or edge checkbox, it's down and upscale each frame without downscaling and upscaling them proportional. Let's activate the change window size property and start the animation. Here we see some basic information, how many seconds are already rendered and how many pictures of the current second are rendered and at last we see the resolution. As you see the structure rotates much slower, that has to do with the fact that I didn't optimize uh, the structure animator for recording but if many people are interested in this program I will add to this feature too and, and recording a video won't influence the rendering speed anymore. Let's change a few values for the recording. Now the structures move to the corners of the animation frame. But if you spend some time to set the right values, you can animate beautiful animations and record them with this tool. I will add a few of them to the end of this video. Let's stop the recording and you see the structure rotates much faster. Let's watch the recorded video. It is stored in the STR animator folder and the file have a timestamp 2 as the screenshots. And here is our recorded video. Let's change to full size and you see a fine animation of this beautiful structure. Let's skip the next seconds. And you see how the structure moves to the right side of the frame. Fine, let's close it. Now I'll show you how to record GIFs.
You can use a shortcut F4. You can choose a folder and set the resolution of a GIF. You can adjust the size of the animation frame too. Now I have to explain you something special. You can record GIFs and a video and take screenshots at the same time. But when you use this option, you can't adjust the animation frame size to the resolution of a recorded video and a recorded GIF at the same time. You have the same options to scale each frame for a GIF as you can scale each frame for a video. Let's press F4 and the frame is adjusted. And now you see the structure rotating while we are recording a GIF. Let's speed up the rotation. If you are recording a GIF, you don't see how many seconds are recorded, instead you only see how many pictures are recorded. Let's stop recording a GIF, let's reset it and take a look on the GIF. Now we see our GIF in the most popular browser. You can upload this GIF, for example on Flickr, and link it on your website or your forum post to promote your structure. Let's take a look on other interesting structures. Now I will explain you a little bit about the background of the development of the structure animator. It all started as a project in school. We had the task to program something with Java OpenGL. And I remember I had this instance structures mod at my home PC and thought we could do something amazing when combining the instance structures mod with Java OpenGL and so Luca and I, a friend of me, who started a development, the structure animator as a school project, started then this project. At the beginning, the structure animator had only a few options to scale and position a structure. For example, you can rotate it around the y-axis and zoom in or zoom out and the blocks was rendered worse. Thank you for watching this video about my latest project. I hope you enjoyed it and, and leave a comment about features that I should implement in future updates of the structure animator.